so close with my mum. Um, we used to have arguments all the time. <laughs> and usually it would blow up into a big shout and screaming situation. Sometimes there was genuine disagreement and uh, I try and sort of work to a compromise fairly quickly because I'm a bit soft like that with my kids. I would try and understand from their point of view and I would try to give them space and then try and get them to talk to me and they always did in the end. Arguing is naturally a fact of life, it's, it's going to happen. Um, I think the key thing is how you manage the conflict. Well, children do know what buttons to press. Most definitely, they know what's going to hurt you, they know what's going to rile you. The child just wants your attention, wants to annoy you because a, a situation needs to be aired and the only way to bring it to the surface is if, if the child, you know, pushes those buttons. This is basically a period between the age of 9 to 14 where children and young people are going through loads of changes. Obviously they're having to adapt to new surroundings, whether it's new peer groups. It could be quite a difficult time for them, so it's about being sensitive to those changes. If you do argue, you've got to try and stay, it's very difficult to say stay calm, you've got to choose your moment. When tempers are high, um, that may not be the best time to actually discuss the actual issue and get to the underlying cause. Maybe choose a, a more appropriate time to discuss this um, with the family. Call a family meeting. You don't have to call it family meeting if you think that oh, doesn't reflect the language of our family culture. But to, I think to give warning to the child is quite good psychologically to say, you know, in 15 minutes we are all meeting in the living room. If the children have a disagreement, which they do quite often, um, my biggest tip would be to listen to whoever has been involved without interruptions from the others. Getting them to talk to each other. Um, and if they, can't, if they can't do that, I'll separate them um, until they are ready to, to talk to each other. But my big, one of my big things is I always make them say sorry to each other in the end. Like my mum and dad have always said, just if you've got to say anything, just come out of it. Don't keep anything locked up, sort of thing. So it's always been quite an open sort of house. If you have a disagreement with your child, try and understand where they're coming from and ensure that they feel listened to. That's a big thing that the young people are always saying about parents, they don't listen. Uh, it's a weird thing, sometimes the parents are, but they're forgetting to show it. So if you're looking at somebody's face and you're nodding and stopping and saying, OK, can I, is that what you're saying? Can I just check out that you're saying this? Then the child knows they're listening to it. It is a good idea to repeat what they've said and say, you know, is that how you're feeling? Is, is that what's going on? And by that, you will normally get a good response because then they know you're listening to them. And that goes for all family members. If there is a conflict or a disagreement between yourself and another adult in the household, I think it's important for children to basically see that issue resolved. And obviously for them, they need to, to obviously understand and learn that conflict does end. I'm always looking to teach the child something in any kind of interaction at all. That is teaching the child how to reason uh, and preparing them in some way. Uh, okay, this is how situations get resolved.